we're gonna grind the concrete. You have to grind the concrete before you coat it. The reason is, is because coatings won't grip onto a smooth surface. If you take a drop of water and place it on a glass table, it's gonna stay in a bead. It's not gonna penetrate into the surface. That's because it has nothing to penetrate into. Concrete's the same way. Water will puddle on it, and if you place epoxy on concrete without preparing it first, it won't penetrate just like the water won't penetrate. So, grinding the floor, acid washing, shot blasting, all different types of methods of preparing concrete. Basically speaking, the, the concrete needs to be as rough as the thickness of the coating. So if you're doing a really thin coating, then you can just acid wash. If you're doing a thicker coating like us, you need it rougher so it has more to grip onto. If you're gonna do like a super duper uh, machine shop, it's a quarter of an inch thick, that's like 15 bucks a square foot, then you're gonna shot blast it and make it even rougher. So you have to be careful that you don't make it too rough because then it'll take more material to level it back out. But you want it rough enough so that that's something to grip onto. Just think about climbing a mountain. The bigger rocks, the better. So we're gonna grind the floor and then we'll put the first coat down. It'll grip onto the surface because it'll, it'll be inside of it. That's why we use delivery systems, which are solvents or thinners to put into the coating. That way it will be delivered from the can into the surface in a better manner. If you just take a coating without adding a delivery system to it, it will be too thick to penetrate, even if you grind it. So, a lot of people will say, well, isn't a thinner bad? No, 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 no. I mean, you're looking at it as if you're painting a wall. If you're painting a wall and you put down a thinner into the, the coating, then you can only put down so much. If you, if, you, if you put down, let's say I put down a gallon of coating on this floor, and I also take a floor the same size and I put a gallon of coating that's mixed with half a gallon of thinner that's gonna evaporate, and I put the whole gallon and a half of, with thinner on the other floor and the whole gallon on this floor, and they both dry, which one's thicker? Well, they're both the same thickness. Because, just because the half a gallon of thinner evaporated from the other floor doesn't make it thinner. So it's just used to penetrate into the floor. It's used to make it thinner so that it can penetrate. It's also used to give you more time coatings dry pretty quick, especially the quality sparse we use. And it won't level out in a uniform manner if you don't give yourself some time to level it out. So adding it thinner is also just like adding more time. Um, it doesn't make it any thinner as long as you're putting the same amount of product onto the floor as you would have. So let's check out this floor before we dry it. We got some cracks right here. That's not good. It's not good if you're using epoxy, especially. So this crack right here gets smaller when this concrete slab gets hot because it expands and this concrete slab expands. So that crack will get smaller during the heat of the day. And at nighttime, when this concrete slab shrinks and this one shrinks, it gets larger. And that's causing this back and forth all day long, which is why when you put an epoxy floor on top, epoxy's rigid, it's not flexible. They, it buckles eventually because it has no flexibility. That's why we don't use epoxy on floors with cracks because of the nature of epoxy. It's not resilient, it has no flexibility to it. Um, so we use a polyaspartic urethane, which is flexible. That way, when this thing moves, it can move right on top with it. Also, polyaspartic urethanes are a lot stronger than epoxy. You can look at spec sheets online. Our website has them. You can go to Sherwin Williams and look at their spec sheets. The product we use has 6,400 pounds of tensile strength. Tensile strength is when you pull something apart. Epoxy has about 3,000, so it's twice as strong. The adhesion strength of this product is 425 PSI. That means the pull strength. Uh, when you have the coating in the concrete like it should be anchored and you pull it, the thin outer layer 
when it breaks apart, that's called the adhesion strength. There's different ways to measure applied strength. There's tensile strength, there's adhesion strength, there's shear strength, there's abrasion resistance, there's tensile hardness, there's flexural strength, there's torsion, there's UV stability, there's acid strengths. There's an infinite number of way, ways to measure applied strength. So when someone tells you something stronger, what you need to first ask is stronger how? If they can't explain that, then they don't know what they're talking about. They're just trying to roll you with, you know, some kind of sales pitch. Secondly, you need to ask them, why is that important? So adhesion strength is when you pull the coating, they take actually a gauge, a suction cup, and glue it to the surface, and then they squeeze it. It's got a, a measuring system that shows you how many pounds until it pops. So the way you measure the coating is like that for its adhesion strength. And when it breaks, it tells you at what point it broke. So this coating breaks at 425 PSI um, versus epoxy at 300. So this polysporic sticks better too. Now, that's kind of a moot point when you get over 300 PSI uh, because concrete has actually really low tensile strength. When you pull it apart, it breaks really easy. So whenever you hear about concrete, you hear 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 PSI, they're talking compression strength. Okay. People have free reign to tell you what testing method their product is good at. It's a sales pitch. Concrete companies do the same thing. So if they're selling you concrete, they're not going to tell you the tensile strength. They're going to tell you the compression strength, which is 3,000 to 5,000. The tensile strength, when you pull apart the concrete, is extremely weak, like 250 pounds, 280 pounds, 300 maybe. So just because you've got a good compression strength doesn't mean it's, it's strong in all the ways. The reason I'm telling you that is because when a coating is, sticks greater than 300 pounds, it's almost a moot point. Because when you're pulling it that hard, it's gonna break at that point anyway. So if you've got a, 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 a coating that sticks at five billion pounds per square foot, and you've got a, a, a coating that sticks at 301 pounds per square foot, and the tensile strength of the concrete is only 300, which one sticks better? They both stick equally because once it hits 300, the concrete's gonna break from itself, the coating's still gonna be stuck to the back on both of them at 300. So even though this has a coating, I mean, adhesion strength of 425, that's kind of like an overkill, but hey, it sticks better. So you need to make sure you understand when people are explaining things to you, like, you know, arm yourself with information, you know, ask yourself, you know, another thing is like, okay, polyaspartic, this urethane I use, okay, you know, is it the only urethane that's good? I mean, is it, there's something called polyurea, what's the difference? So, uh, polyureas are the older technology, they're called aromatic urethanes and they yellow. And Polyureas are flexible, that's great, but they yellow. So they took a polyurea and transformed it into a polyaspartic. So a polyaspartic is a type of polyurea, just like a Corvette is a type of Chevrolet. Polyaspartics are aliphatic. That means they don't yellow. That's important because when the sun, the light, any kind of light hits this coating, it's gonna yellow over time unless it's UV stable like polyaspartic. So epoxy is not UV stable, it's very un, un, uh, unstable uh, to light. UV, uh, epoxy yellows very quickly. Epoxy yellows extremely quick. Polyurea yellows pretty rapidly. Polyaspartic does not yellow. Another important thing to know is that urethanes are symmetrical, they have a symmetrical molecule structure, which makes them stronger. So if you look at a rose bush and you look at the crystal lattice that it's hanging on, all these squares are uniform, and that actually makes the structure stronger. Sky, skyscrapers are built in the same way, a uniform structure. All urethanes are crystalline versus epoxy which makes them stronger. Epoxy is asymmetrical. It's just a blob of molecules that are pulling at each other. 
My point is, you need to compare apples to apples, not oranges to apples. A lot of people say, well, it's a box of stronger. No, like, what do you mean by that, you know? Like, is it, what, for what purpose? I mean, everything in the world is stronger at something. I mean, there's like an infinite number of testing methods. You can test them, you know, a product here. You can test it in a different atmosphere, different temperature, and things change. So the question is, um, like, what are you going to use it for, a floor? And what properties do you need? You need non-yellowing. You don't want a yellow floor. You want flexibility. You don't want cracking. You want at least 300 pounds of adhesion strength. You want this greatest tensile strength is even great. Get, I mean, the more you tug and pull on it, I mean, the stronger the better. Um, but the flexibility is really, really the the the, the, um, the big difference that I've seen. Plus the turnaround time. These coatings can be installed in one day, and they dry in two hours, which means you can walk on them in two hours and drive on them in 12 hours. So in 12 hours, tomorrow morning, after we get done with this floor tonight, they can drive their car when it's fully cured. Epoxy takes 72 hours. Plus, the epoxy takes two days to install, because i got to install today, come back tomorrow and coat it, and then wait three more days. With all your stuff sitting outside, guys come to your house for two days. I mean, there's so many reasons not to use epoxy. Anyway, so we're going to get started on the grinding process. 